Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. And we're back with another multiplayer strategy video to tide you over during the summer of disruptions to our regular Q&A schedule. Now, one of the most interesting things we've done recently is use every challenge character in the week of their repeat challenge and using them as the star. There are a few characters we've liked from the very beginning as soon as they were introduced and some that just haven't clicked for us. Just no appeal. And it's part of the reason that for many years we had specific teams that we would use while other characters just didn't get very much play. So by forcing ourselves to do this series since November, so over the last nine months, it's nice discovering things even after almost 10 years of having an injustice channel. And today's insight is sort of a double barreled one. One, it's about a character, New 52 Superman, and two, about a very specific gear loadout. So a bit of background, some of which we covered in last week's recap. So New 52 Super New 52 Superman's passive is Rage of Krypton. Superman receives plus 100% basic damage buff for accumulating power, stacks up at three times and can't be rinsed. Superman takes 15% less damage with every Justice League teammate. Batman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, Cyborg, and Wonder Woman. And it's important to know that when he was first introduced, there was no Tantu Totem and no Master's Death Card, which meant that any character that had a passive requiring a lot of power, generally that's not a very good passive. The abilities requiring power would take a long time in each fight to manifest. So if you were grinding for rewards or multiplayer rank and doing it even halfway efficiently, you very likely weren't getting much benefit from that type of passive. So early on, New 52 Superman's defensive ability, taking up to 30% less damage, was the only part of his passive that came into play. Getting 100% basic damage boost took two bars of power, maxing out at 300% basic damage boost after generating six bars of power, and that would take forever. If you were gearing him with stuff that would just increase power generation, you weren't getting a lot of damage in the time that it took you to build up his passive. So the introduction of Tantu Totem and Master's Death Card unlocked the potential of New 52 Superman and all those other characters who had passive abilities that needed power. And our initial inclination was to use him on a team with New 52 Wonder Woman. She could have Tantu, Tantu Totem and Master's Death Card and she would give her Justice League teammates half as much power as she spent. And that led to the original Justice League team with New 52 Superman geared to take as little damage as possible. He had zero offensive gears because once New 52, Super, once New 52 Wonder Woman had done six special twos, he would have his basic damage boosted to maximum 300%. And you can see that in our videos. Link in the description. By gearing him to take minimal damage, he was the perfect last man standing to do significant damage and he could outlast the opponent's team because he was geared to survive. The uncommon combination of tank and high damage output was this New 52 Superman as the backup character on our Justice League team as long as he had the chance to generate a lot of power. But if you play him like this, then Wonder Woman is the star and Superman is a backup. So, like I said, starting November 2022, playing each challenge character as a star, and in the world that has Tantu Totem and Master's Death Cart, with very few exceptions, being the star means doing specials. And as you can see from the footage that you're watching, he is a really good special specialist. I want to point out a few things. His special two is three parts. Each part does significant damage. It's not that it's really heavy weighted in one. Uh, typically, if there's going to be a hit that doesn't do a lot of damage, it's because it's not critting. So if any of the hits crit, they have a chance to knock out your opponent in multiplayer play, as long as you're not facing a team that's way stronger. So that was the first thing we discovered, playing with him differently as the star instead of the backup. 
this may not be the best team with New 52 Superman. I think it's still the one with New 52 Wonder Woman. This is not the best team with Superman, but this is the New 52 Superman at his best. Because he's got Tanty Totem and Master's Death card, it only takes a total of three knockouts or tag-ins combined to max out his passive with a 300% boost to his basic damage. And there's enough separation between all three hits that if you knock out the opponent with any with either of the first two hits, he's not going to whiff. Each of those hits is going to do some damage. So maybe you're thinking, after all that talk, why not give him a third gear to increase the chance of his special two creating, right? Because it does so much damage. Because he already does huge damage, it's pretty much guaranteed to knock out anybody who doesn't have Astro Harness. And it's nice to knock out more than one character with the special, but when you get in the higher levels, even though it does a significant amount of damage because there's that un that imbalance between your team and the other team, the opponent's team that keeps on getting higher and higher stats, it's just not going to happen. I mean, it's a neat thing if you can do it in the first fight, but typically it's not going to happen. So it's not as important when you're looking at an ultimate. You need to win six more fights after the first one. And so the second thing we discovered, which has nothing to do with New 52 Superman, and it might be obvious to everyone else playing, but it wasn't to us. Claw of Horus counts as one hit for that 10% tag in damage. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Claw of Horus counts as one hit on tag in. So why is that a big deal? If you play with Master's Death Cart and pay attention, you will notice that it is one hit short when maxed out. You've got support cards for power generation for standard non-power generation boosted character to give a bar of power. So tagging with Tentu Totem, Master's Death Cart, even if you've got all the support cards for power generation, when you tag in without any other benefit, without any power generating boost from teammates, without any power generating boosting gear, you're not getting your second bar. You're short. That means you need to hit the opponent once before you get that second bar of power if your two gears are Tanty Tone Master's Death Card. And that's normally not a problem, right? You do your tag in at the very beginning and the opponent will not block and you can get a free unblocked basic combo. But if the opponent has a bar or more of power, doing a tag in basic combo first before you try to launch a special, it doesn't give you the timing to land your special two unblocked consistently. In fact, you are much more likely to have your special two blocked or if you wait too long and you try to time it too finely, you can end up eating a special from your opponent. The other solution for that, the other previous solution was to have a gear that boosted power generation in your third slot that lets you tag in and do a special two before the opponent blocks, which works fine. It's great against a power dampening opponent. And if you're using any of the three and a half star gears or lower, not a problem. But of the two out of three, four and a half star gears that boost power generation, they also add damage over time, which can be dangerous for you if you're fighting against a Blackest Night Flash team. And it can be especially dangerous trying to avoid starting damage over time effects against that opponent because your Tantu Totem Master's Death Cart Special Specialist is likely responsible for most of your damage output. So if you're going to be trying to avoid giving damage over time to the Blackest Night Flash team you're playing a little bit scared because most teams, if you're avoiding playing your star, especially with Master's Death Cut, right? If you tag in and do a special right away um, on the second tag in, you're going to do a lot of damage over time effects. So Claw of Horus solves a really great problem, right? It's a, sorry, it's a, it's a pretty great solution to a problem. If you're going to need to shatter some gears on a low damage taking opponent tank, Claw of Horus is much less effective if you're using it on a character who doesn't have Tantu Totem or Master's Death Card if he's not on your star. So the, t the, the inclination was not to put it on there because you wanted to be able to drop a special two right away. And this actually solves a problem. Didn't even really know it was a solution because that one extra hit of Claw of Horrors. And you can see in these fights where we're tagging in Superman and we are able to launch a special two immediately. And the real upshot of the discovery is this. This very specific loadout, Tantu's Totem, 
Tantu's totem. It's Tantu totem. Master's Death Cart and Claw of Horus. They are just enough to do a special two on Tagen against most teams, even if the opponent has a bar of power. They can often shatter Astro Harness on the first Tagen with a few special ones. Again, because the timing is so hard to get, it's very it's very beneficial to do one quick tap to quickly get to the second bar of power so that you have two bars while the Astro Harness's invulnerability is still intact. Um, so yeah, often you can shatter the Astro Harness. You get the special one, power back because it's their invulnerable. Special one again, power back. Sometimes maybe not if it's a long special one. And then you can do at least another one. And if you don't shatter Astro Harness on that, you definitely will do it on the second tagging by leveraging the tagging effect of Master's Death Cart. So in my mind now, after having played this for even just the one week and having played other combinations for so long, to me, this is sort of the default ideal of which three gears to put on the main damage dealer of your team. And granted, there's always going to be exceptions where minor tweaks make more sense. And a good example of that is the Flashpoint Deathstroke Um on a flashpoint team. I still think the best third gear for him is League of Assassins Knives. Death Deathstroke just does so much damage that the splash damage saves more time than you would save with using him to shatter Astro Harness. Putting Claw of Horus on Aquaman in our ideal flashpoint team works just as well, if not better, in terms of speed. But in general, when you're having trouble coming up with a third gear for your special specialist who already has Tantu Totem Master's Death Cart. Claw of Horus is a great option and I maybe this is not exactly Hill that I'll die on yet because it's really just been the week but I think it should be the main option not just because of its abilities but because it is responsible for one more power generating hit that gives you the complete second bar of power and it makes all the fights easier. And for housekeeping, Hawk Girl, and not as important, right? Because it's not their gear loadout. It's these are just sort of filler stuff, right? Hawk Girl has Astro Harness, Iba Stick, and Nth Metal Morning Star, so that she can contribute a little something. The damage over time uh, ups her damage output potential a little bit. Normally, you don't need it. Nth Metal Morning Star is uh, helpful because it boosts her basic damage. She gets the extra ability that's hers. She can stun a little bit. And New Fifty Two Shazam has Overpowered Super. Mutated Bone Spikes, and probably the most important gear that he's got is Necron Scythe. So that when he comes back in because of his passive, he can really take advantage of the Scythe's abilities that are dependent on having really low health because he stays at low health without getting knocked out for a while, for 21 seconds, if you've maxed out his passive. And that is it. That is the Injustice multiplayer strategy for this week. This is where we like to give a big thank you to our patrons on Patreon. That would be Alexis M. supporting us on the Your Message Here tier, Michael DeVries, Irvin Ruiz, and Hoshi127, who are supporting us on the credited level. And the other names that you see on your screen are those who have been generous enough to have supported us at some point during this pandemic. So I'll let you watch the rest of this Ultimate Ladder. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda.